In this video, we're going to install the emulator for App Inventor simply by following the instructions. First, you know, when I go to the URL ai2.appinventor.mit.edu, it takes me right here into a design and build screen right in my browser. So there's nothing special that we have to install to develop with App Inventor. But if we want to run our program, we're going to go to Connect and then Emulator, and it's going to look for an emulator. And you'll notice that this one's going to time out. It says, launch the AI starter program on your computer, and then try again. And the reason is, I haven't yet configured an emulator. Now we have a couple of options uh, for emulation. One is that we can build devices, we can build applications rather, and run them on our device directly. If you have an Android device or tablet. Uh, now, I, I'm assuming that a lot of people who are taking this do have that, but for my demos, I'm going to be doing screen captures, and so I'm going to show the emulator that's actually going to run on my computer, and that's option two. That's what we're going to discover today. One word about option one, though. If you don't have an Android device or you uh, maybe want to try testing on several different devices, where would you go to get an Android device cheap? It doesn't necessarily have to be your primary device. Uh, you could always get one used off eBay if you want, or you could go to one of the uh, prepaid wireless places, like I know the, the Kroger near me sells Android phones for $20 or so. So there's some very inexpensive options if you do want to go uh, with this option one. Nonetheless, I went ahead and clicked on option two, and the first thing it wants me to do then is download the installer. So I'm going to go ahead and click and let it download. Now the file's downloaded, I'm simply going to choose Open from my bottom status bar. Now I stepped through a few, uh, a few hoops with my antivirus, and now I'm at the point where I can install. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Next, choose I Agree. Um, anyone who uses this computer is fine. Desktop icon, probably a good idea. We'll go ahead and click on that. And Next. Uh, just remember where this is installed, but there's nothing that we have to do with it. It's just if you have to go back and maintain it. C program files x86 app inventor by default. Uh, choose next, and I'm going to go ahead and choose install, and we'll let it go. And complete. Now we see start AI starter tool now. I'm going to choose finish and leave that selected. Reason being, when we're in the App Inventor, that's what it's looking for, is that AI starter. Uh, that's what essentially connects the App Inventor with our computer. So I'll look down on my start window, and I'll see that AI Starter is running. Now I'm going to go back to my MIT App Inventor, just this uh, generic uh, one that we have here. I haven't made any changes to this yet. And I'm going to click on Emulator. We'll give this a moment. And sure enough, when I choose that, a little uh, icon comes up on my start bar, and we see this emulator is starting up. Now we get a message here, emulator started waiting, and then a countdown seconds to ensure all is running. It looks pretty good. I can go ahead and slide across just like a normal Android phone. And now it is, uh, now it's going to load on our program. Now we have a message, your companion app is out of date. Click OK to start the update. Watch your emulator screen because you asked to be asked to approve the update. Uh, OK, no problem. Choose OK. And we'll give this a few moments to update. We'll walk through a few prompts on the emulator. Now we have application installed. It says to choose done, not open. Done? Okay. Then go to App Inventor in your web browser, click connect, and choose reset connection. Okay. So connect, reset connection. And we'll give it a moment for the emulator to restart. I'll go ahead and choose connect emulator and we'll let it start. And now we see that our little test application is running on our emulator. It doesn't do anything yet because we haven't programmed it, but we see text for button one and hint for text button one. Uh, we can type some things in. Very quick and easy to set this up. I can tell you, especially comp compared to a full-fledged development environment. So give it a try. In our next step, we'll, in our next video, we will enhance this application a bit and we will watch uh, as we have the ability to program in the web browser and then see the results right here on our application. Thank you.